Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We are working through every company in the S&P 500 and today is Duke Energy Corporation, ticker D-U-K. Over the next few minutes, I'll discuss my thoughts with valuation and its business quality. First up, the market cap is $71 billion, enterprise value $133 billion, so there's a significant amount of debt on this business. Looks like it's about $62 billion in net debt. This is an electric utility company. They provide electric utility. Uh, electricity and gas utilities and renewables throughout the United States. It looks like they have, are in various states, including the Carolinas, Florida, Midwest, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, um, based in North Carolina, has wind, solar, battery storage, um, again, natural gas and utilities utilities and gas so um beta 0 0.3371 this is pretty typical for utility companies pretty low beta 0.33 is actually very very low so it's about two-thirds less volatile than your average s p 500 company and you see that when you get down to this return on invested capital chart very little change year over year on what the return on invested capital is um the only thing i notice right off the bat is you have one year of loss that tends to be a pretty good sign. You have 19 years of profitability out of the last 20. Um, that would meet my standard for high quality. The, the downside that I see here is you start out in 2005 at a 5% return on invested capital. And it's basically a slow roll down for the next two decades. So, I mean, it, it's it's up and down, but basically you get to about two, three, about 3% 3 at the end of the de the this time, 3.3%. So your business is deteriorating. I mean, this is a deteriorating business. It's stable, but it's slow and steady down. I mean, there, there's some bouncing it around here, but it, you're starting out 5%. You never get back to that. Um, I don't like what I see here at all in terms of my return on invested capital. It's getting worse over time and it's low already. I mean, you're already below 5%. 5% is a very low number to get a high rate of return with. What we can see with the return on invested capital is this 3% number last 10 years. Even with all the debt we have, we're only getting return on equity up to 6.3%. Part of that is just because it's hard to get interest rates substantially lower than, lower than 3%. Your interest rates lower than 3% are what allow you to get your return on equity higher than your return on invested capital. But once interest rates like today start going above this return on invested capital, all of a sudden this return on equity is going to collapse. And so you get into a really big problem here with the capital structure because you have so much debt on this business. Also, why are these returns getting worse over time? Well, we can clearly see it right here. Your 10-year CAGR, your revenue is growing at 5%, your assets growing at 10%. If you grow your assets faster than revenue over time, eventually your return on invested capital is going to get worse. And that's what you see. It's getting worse and worse and worse, and it's leading to lower EPS growth. This is probably due to dilution. Anytime you see DPS growing slower than revenue, it's probably due to dilution. The main takeaway here, though, is this P-E ratio is bonkers. It's way too high. Your price to book ratio is way too high. It's not worth paying more than book for Duke Energy because you're earning less than 10% on your return on equity. You need to be paying like half of book value, which means the company is significantly overvalued here. Um, you, I wouldn't pay more than a PE of 10 for this company. I would probably, it's probably worth very little. I mean, it's probably worth the dividends. So what's the dividend rate? $3.90 here. If I could get a 10% yield on my dividend, it's growing at 2% a year. So let's get an 8% yield on my dividend. So 10 would be about $39 a share. Let's call it 45, $50 a share. I mean, this company needs to get, you need to buy this company in the eight to nine PE range is probably what it's worth because that would be your EPS growth plus your dividends growing at that rate. So you know, $45 a share, $50 a share. And even then it's not something that's going to be super interesting to me. Uh, so that's from a value standpoint. You do see operating margin getting a little bit better over time, but not significant. I mean, think about it. You, your dividends are only up 30% across the decade. Um, and that's with your revenue growing, you know, 50%. Not great. If you're enjoying this video so far, hit that like button. You can like the video, even if you don't like the stock. Let's, you know, those likes let people, YouTube know that you enjoy my analysis. So please like that video, hit that subscribe button. There's a lot of companies I really do like. Um, but we're not seeing it here yet so far with Duke Energy. So income statement. Again, you like to see operating profit every year, um, net income every year. Very, very good numbers there. Um, some of the volatility, of course, is this, you know, it looks like some write downs in 2020. 
Um, here's the dilution problem. 575 million shares outstanding to 769 million shares outstanding. The only reason they're growing is because they're diluting you. And they're diluting a lot. Um, well, so let's ignore 2012 to 2013 and just take this number. Let's do this. We'll take 2013 because most of the dilution occurred in this year. But if we just even even if we do that, you're still diluting 10% over the course of a decade. That's a 1% loss EPS um, per year that's going to affect your returns there. And you can't afford that when your return on vested capital is only 3%. Now, that's why these returns are so bad is because their return on vested capital is 3%. So you're just not getting the return on vested capital that you need. And it is what I thought here. You had $42 billion in PP&E. You almost triple your your assets in the decade. Almost. I mean, if it was $120 billion here, it'd be a tripling. But it's not a tripling. But you more than double, almost triple, your property, plant, and equipment. Did your income triple? No. Your income's up from one, you know, maybe it doubled from 2012. It's up 50% from 2013. So what's happening is you're growing your assets so much faster than your earnings. And so it's going to get worse and worse returns over time. And that's that's what we're seeing in the numbers. You 4 x your long-term debt. You've gone from $18 billion to $60 billion, you know, 3 to 4 x. So your debt's growing even faster than your assets are growing. Um, this is a business that is just trying to survive and could be on track for like a bankruptcy because they're just... <sighs> It's not even so much that they're going to go bankrupt. It's just that shareholders are going to get nothing because what's going to have to happen is you're going to have to stop paying dividends in order to justify continuing to make these payouts. You can clearly see they're growing their PP&E faster than their cash flow from operations. 5.5 billion, 5.2 billion. So they they grew slower here, but then they matched it in 2015. Grew fa- they out Look, look at this. They're spending way more than all the numbers in this line. So the numbers in this line, the PP&E, are spending more than the cash flow from operations. Where is the cash to pay dividends? It's all coming from debt. It's all coming from debt. You can't pay any dividends without debt here. So yeah, that's great if you're a big company, very high returns on invested capital, you're kind of doing like a leverage buyout. They're not doing that. They don't have the capital to do this. They don't have the cash flow to do this. And it's it's really, really bad because you're taking on all this. We're, let's go to the... So that's just looking at the dividends and the extra debt. Let's go back to the income statement and look at your, your interest income. It's $2.2 billion in interest income in last year. That was with low interest rates. As interest rates rise, like if interest rates double, again, that's going to additionally wipe out your dividends. This company cannot earn returns that justify the shareholder capital that's being put into this business. It's basically functioning, you know, for the good of the public, not for good of the shareholders because, and they've been really just struggling to get by. I mean, you can see management trying to do what they can, but it's not going to work out well. So I would not want to be a long-term shoulder shareholder of this company. You're going to earn... If you earn returns in this business, it's going to be low single digits, three to six percent. I think that's your three to six percent long term returns in this business. If you hold this for 30 years, um, not something that's interesting to me. Um, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell so that you get notified as I upload new videos each and every week. There's some great companies I've covered in the S&P 500. I have covered over 150 so far. Check out that video at the top in the playlist and you'll see the videos that I've already covered. So um, if you enjoyed this type of content, check out quickfs.net. That is the uh, sponsor for today's video and the link to them is the first link in the description below. You can check out quickfs.net. That's my affiliate link. If you sign up there, that's a great way to support the channel. Um, Whether a free or a paid account, I can get a commission for sending you over to them. I really like using this software and I hope you'll check it out as well. Thank you for listening. Until next time, stop paying fees, start building wealth.